Hi there. If you're new around here, I'm Stacy, the mixed media and caustic artist behind Studio Stacy. This week's video is a little different than other videos in that I'm actually not painting this week. I am, however, doing some creative um, projects, we'll say that. So um, stay tuned for the video, and if you're new, please subscribe. Love to have you. All right, thanks. I have a couple free days this week, which doesn't happen very often. So I wanted to work on a project that I've been wanting to work on for a while uh, with some free time that I have and it involves inside the studio here. So I thought I'd take you along, but first this place needs cleaned up because I have no empty surface areas and I'm going to require some larger surface spaces to work on. So I'll flip the camera around and show you the mess and get the mess cleaned up. We have surface area number one that needs cleaned up. I'm working on a blanket for our spare bedroom on this area, but I wanna get this out of the way so I can start this other project because I'm in desperate need to do this other project. So this all has to get cleaned up and then Try not to make you too dizzy spinning around. This area also needs cleaned up, which I've actually started to clean it up. So it's not too out of control, but prepping some um, panels right over here. And so all of that stuff has to get put away. All right, let's get it cleaned up and I'll pick you guys back up in a bit. All right, I got the one space cleared off and I'm gonna show you what I'm going to be working on here, um, which are some shades for the studio area. Um, my computer is by window and the area is blinding in the afternoon and even sometimes in the morning when the sun comes out, which doesn't happen that often in the winter here in Ohio, but it happens a lot in the summer. And so I had a couple free days, like I said earlier, and I wanted to get this project done. So let me show you the fabric and what I'm working with here. This is the fabric, and I don't know if you can see that lighting very well, because of course the sun is shining and making a lovely shadow, but it's from Spoonflower, and um, I really like it. Little bees beeswax and caustic, you know. And then I have some leftover blackout material from um, shades that I made for our bedroom. So I'm gonna be using it. So I'll put um, a couple links below in the um, description area for you to see what, I, I did not make up this tutorial. Um, <laughs> I just followed directions. So I will put the couple links down below that I used to sew these, but um, we will get started here. Okay. The blackout lining material that I am using is, like I said earlier, left over. So I'm actually having to piece two pieces together so that I have enough fabric for both of the window blind area. And I'm using these little sewing clips. They are my favorite thing to use. You don't have to worry about poking yourself when you're sewing with the sewing machine and worrying about pins being in the fabric. The clips work perfectly. They're really easy and quick to put on. And then of course, quick to take off when you start to sew. I have this pegboard right behind my sewing area that I painted using some painter's tape and some bright colored paint. And I store all of my threads back here on those little pegs. And then I also store my sewing supplies in an old refurbished suitcase. If you want a complete tour of my sewing area, definitely check out the video below. I will link that in the description for an entire tour on my sewing area.
A few other of my favorite sewing supplies is this rotary cutter and the mat that goes along with it. It makes perfectly straight cut lines and the mats are really nice to use to make precise measurements and draw in those precise lines that I need. This project is taking a lot longer than what I thought it is. I think I'm on day three, I believe. This is, and um, the state of the studio is once again a disaster. Um, I'm hoping to get this project wrapped up today, but we'll see what happens. I thought I would just flip the camera around and give you a glimpse of the studio because um, sometimes I know you guys see it all cleaned up and spruced up for these videos, but um, it's usually not like that. So let me flip the camera around and show you. Okay, so entering into the studio, see random light, ironing board, and then this pile of mess doing some um, experimenting here and leftover fabric some dolls i covered up my wax so it doesn't get messed up with the experimenting going on there and then flipping the camera around try not to make you too dizzy this space has a bunch of pieces parts on it for the blinds and this is blind number two blind number one is done we have to mount them still and I have to finish sewing on a few pieces parts but I am hoping by the end of the day today I will have blinds up the worst part about this blind project um, most of it's gone pretty quickly, but I'm on like the last tedious part. I'm hoping it's the last. Um, lots of measuring and things like that, which wasn't bad, but it's the hand sewing. And I'm hand sewing on these little teeny tiny um, circle things, plastic circles. And it's really tedious. <laughs> so um, I, I don't like hand sewing. <laughs> I'll just <laughs> leave it at that. Um, but yeah, the rest of the project actually has gone really quick. And like I said before, before, excuse me, I will link, um, the tutorials that I used down below. So if anybody else is interested, um, in making their own Roman shades or Roman blinds, um, then you can do so. Okay. Let me get back to work. Last few steps, time to mount, getting the power tools out. Time to say goodbye to the roller shades. Maybe. Wave goodbye. Several hours later and um, still working on the curtains because, well, decided that they didn't have enough light blocking properties to them, if you will. So a quick trip to Joanne Fabrics, thankfully, they had some stuff in stock, some black cotton fabric, and some heat and bond, and well, we are literally pressing on. Hey there, we are going on day four or five of the 
the uh, studio blind project. The good news is the blinds are in. Um, the kind of so-so news, the studio's a mess. And I have curtains that now don't match the other curtains. So I'm thinking I'm gonna fix that problem today. But I'm gonna spin the camera around and show you the finished curtains because I'm really happy with them. Okay, there are the finished curtains. And there's a pull string over here that they operate super smoothly. And yeah, I love them. So there you have it. Curtains are up, but me. Okay. Don't mind the state of the studio. Ladder here. And a huge mess here. And tools and things laying out here. And then here are the um, other two windows and they just have those ugly roller shades on them. I only bought enough fabric for that window. So I'm gonna try to spruce up these window shades over here. And these don't have to be completely light blocking like those do over there because that's where the computer is and it's really blinding when you're sitting there trying to work. But over here is just a large workspace. I don't have to be on the screen over here. And so it's nice just to have the curtains there to block out some light, but they don't have to be completely light blocking. So that's today's project figuring out what to do with those. All right, I got the blinds down from the windows and I've cleared off this workspace behind me that I normally put the, uh, use with the encaustic wax. So I cleared off that space and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. Might be an idea if you have an area that you wanna spruce up in your house but you don't wanna spend a ton of money on it, like a kid's room or something like that. This is a really inexpensive way to spruce up these vinyl um, curtains or shades I guess that's what they're called roller shades um, so I'll flip the camera around and show you what I'm doing but it basically involves some alcohol ink um, which I think you can still get like at Michaels or Joanne Fabrics or a lot of those places I know you can also order it online but it's Ranger makes it and um, I'll show you the bottle up close so you can see what they look like and it comes in all sorts of colors and I've picked my colors out. I tested them out on a scrap, like a piece that I cut off because um, the shades were too long in the windows, so I chopped them off. And I tested out some of the colors on there, picked the colors that I want to use, and um, yeah, let's get started. So with the alcohol inks, you want to use this felt applicator and these little felt pads, and you just need a couple drops of whatever colors you're going to use. I used a couple pinks, a blues, some greens, and then you just dab that felt applicator along with the ink that you put on it onto a onto the plastic surface and you just kind of turn the handle slightly so you don't get the same exact ink blob pattern everywhere. And you can see it just automatically makes that really pretty design. It's the alcohol, alcohol ink really does most of the work for you. Adds in some nice, pretty little texture effects and it's perfect. Okay, I got the um, all the alcohol ink down on the two roller shades. And the fabric that I chose and picked out from Spoonflower had bees on it. 
along with a honeycomb type of pattern. So I found a stamp that was by also by Tim Holtz. And I'm going to use that and some stays on ink and add in just some random honeycomb uh, pattern with the stamp. And then I will show you guys the finished results. But here's what it looks like so far. Lots of little ink blobs. And then this is the stamp. And I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to use this um, stays on ink. That might be backwards. <laughs> and then um, I'll, I will, I will um, <laughs> tell you the name of the stamps as well because I think this is going to be backwards. But it's um, Stampers Anonymous, and it's the mixed media. And I don't know if you can still get this because I got this years ago now. Um, it's the Mixed Media CMS125 stamps. Um, and there comes in like a pack of four. But um, And then I should tell you, I when I stamp, I don't use a um, like stamping pad or anything like that. I just ink the stamp. I'll show you here. But I ink the stamp and then just press it down randomly. And that kind of makes a little bit of a uneven like not completely impressed stamp and just adds a little bit more character to it if you will just a few more last steps and this will be done i took out the like white bar if you will out of the plastic roll-up shades when i cut the shade shorter um, and so i'm gonna put that back in and I'm doing that with just some like double-sided tape. It's really strong tape. It's called score tape. And um, so I'm going to do that. And then I also need to spray these because alcohol ink is not um, light fast. So I'm going to spray them with an archival like fine art spray, <laughs> strangely enough. But it's light fast. And so I'm hoping that will... Um, preserve the colors of the alcohol ink and um, we'll keep them nice and bright and vibrant. The curtains are done and they are hung up so I thought I would show you both of them. I have one up and one down on both of the sets so you can get the overall effect if you will. I really appreciate you guys coming along on this uh, journey with me, this <laughs> curtain window treatment journey. I know that there wasn't much painting in this week's little video, but um, more to come and I'm actually starting a big huge project. So there will be a lot of painting videos in the very near future. But let me flip the camera around and show you these curtains. Here are the alcohol ink paint blotchy curtains. And you can see the honeycomb and them. They look really nice. Still block out some light and are functional. And I'm really happy with them. They look much better than just the plain old plastic. And the camera is not doing it complete justice, but um, the alcohol ink effect on them is really quite pretty. And here are the Roman blinds or Roman shades over the computer area. These are actually a little bit harder to take a picture of because it, they block quite a bit of light, which will be great when I'm working on the computer. But there is the pattern of the fabric. And I really just love, see how much light they block out there. Um, I really love the pattern on the fabric, the whole, you know, be an encaustic wax theme. So there you have those. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. I know, like I said, it wasn't much of a painting project, but um, I'm really hoping you got some ideas, if nothing else, how to spruce up a room pretty inexpensively with those vinyl roller shades. And like I said, everything will be linked below as far as the tutorials for the shades behind me. 
they look really nice. I'm really happy with them. And um, I pretty much followed the tutorial, so it was not my idea. <laughs> I can't take credit for that. At any rate, if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up if you are not subscribed and would be interested in subscribing, I would really appreciate it. And if you are subscribed and want to hit that little bell, that will notify you every time I release a new video, which is usually on Tuesdays. So as always, thanks very, very much for watching. We will talk to you soon and bye for now.